a good count of how many years I've been doing this. And shortly after that, we probably were in puppetry about two years when we realized what an amazing ministry tool it was, and we instantly really became full-time. Um, not because we decided that, but God had decided that, and we were so busy that we realized that it wasn't just something that we did occasionally. It was all week long we were busy. And as I say, PowerPoint is amazing when you use that in children's ministry, but the power of puppetry is equally, if not more, amazing. <laughs> so I know there's a, a high-tech program going on right now, a class on high-tech PowerPoint ministry, but as, and as much as I would love to use those things in my um, puppet shows and things, I find myself out on you know, <laughs> foreign countries, on uh, city streets, and when you go back to the good old-fashioned puppetry, it's the tools that you have. You have everything you need right here in your two hands. Isn't that amazing? These were the first puppet, puppets that God created right here <laughs> on the end of these stumps is your hands. So... I want to explain a little bit about the kind of puppets that we use. Thanks to the likes of Jim Henson and Kermit the Frog, the wide mouth puppets became the most widely used puppets in children's ministry. There's all types of puppetry. There's hand puppets. I come from Pittsburgh, where we have the home of Mr. Rogers, who used primarily hand puppets. <coughs> yes? Me and Zach got these weird-looking tongue puppet things. Like, you'd stick this finger into the tongue and then the... Bottom mouth, upper mouth, and I did weird eyes. Uh-huh. I'm sure about it. It's awesome. Yeah, there's, uh, there's one called loud mouth, and it's nothing but a big mouth. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, you know, you have hand puppets, you have rod puppets, like they use in some of the um, Eastern cultures, and, and African puppets where they're just rods that control the arms, but the mouths don't move. It's more of like a hand type puppet um, without a moving mouth. Then there's shadow puppetry. There is uh, uh, bonrukai puppetry where, like in Japan, where you actually, the puppeteers are seen out front. Um, you can use all kinds of even kitchen utensils as, as puppets. When I first uh, did puppets for years and years and years, I thought, you know, mop and broom puppets, that's so old school. And I remember a little old lady at one of the conferences I first went to years and years ago that was doing mop and broom puppetry. I said, oh, that is as old as the hills. That's never going to minister to anybody. How wrong I was. Uh, I was doing an inner city sidewalk Sunday school program where I was the only one that week that could be on the team. Everybody else was busy. And I said, well, I'm just going to have to get kids from the audience to help me do the puppets. So we did mop and broom puppetry. I said, well, working in the inner city, they're either going to love this or they're going to kill me. So we'll find out which it was. And they love to, being part of the actors and coming back behind the stage and doing the props. And I realized what an amazing tool it was, and I didn't have to have this huge puppetry team. When I first started it, puppetry teams of 20 to 30 people were very common. And I, I always thought, oh, Lord, I'm never going to reach that goal. I'm never going to have that many people. We started out with a team of 12 people. We do the same programs that we wrote in you know, did all the puppets and the recordings for, we do the same puppet shows with two to three puppeteers that we did with 12 puppeteers. So don't say to yourself, well, I'm only one person, what can I do as far as puppeteering? There's so many resources available. Uh, one good resource on there is One Way Street, and they have something, if we, I'm going to speed through this, but they have what's called nonverbal puppetry. Has anybody heard what that is or know what that is? Okay, if you're doing any kind of missions trips and going to foreign countries and you don't know the language, nonverbal puppetry is the way to go because it's all just motions and actions with the puppets and the props. Where at the very end, if you have a scripture, it can be done in their native language. You just hold up the scripture or whatever. I think at the one about tools, um, it says God has a purpose for you. At the very end, the sign comes up, God has a purpose for you. You can do it in the native language. But the whole skit, they will understand how it's... They have the parable of the uh, wise and foolish builders. And all these things can be taught using puppetry without a single word being spoken. It's all with just actions and with music. So it's a great tool to have. Uh, I'm just going to start out with a little wake-up song, I think, in a minute here. And we're going to teach you some basic puppetry. And then, oh, that's great. We need another. We can't hear that. There we go. Because we need to take it. We're, then we're going to turn you into the puppeteers. Okay, how are we doing there? All right. I'm blessing. Okay, it's in there. All right, how many here are happy because of who God made you to be? 
raise your hand nice and high. I better see everybody's hand up because you're all you. There's not another person in the world just like you. And if you're happy because of who you are, I need you to help me with this little wake up song. I need you to be my background singers. Do you think you can do that today? Yeah. Give it a try. We're going to make like a music video. But I'm going to have my friend back here help me. His name is Wolfer. Now, Wolfer is a pretty amazing dog. He's the only dog in the whole world who can read and write. Does anybody have a pet that can do that? Oh, sure. What is your pet? My sister. Oh, your sister. You got me on that one. That's very good. In fact, I was asking a group of kids in a school. There was probably 500 kids out there. And I said, tell me what some of your pets are. And one little preschool girl raised her hand. She had blonde ringlets, and she stood up. I said, sweetheart, what are your pets at home? She said, leeches. But okay, did I hear that right? So, well, Wolfer's a little shy, so we have to get him to come out here. On the count of three, I want you to yell, come on out, Wolfer, as loud as you can. Here we go. One, two, three. Come on out, Wolfer. Did you see him? Is he there? Did he come out? No. No, he didn't come out. Maybe he didn't hear you. Let's try it a little bit louder. One, two, three. Come on out, Wolfer. Did you see him? Did he come out? Oh, my God. I saw a tail. He's being a little shy. You know what? I've got the perfect way to get Wolfer to come out. It, it works every time. Oh, Wolfer, there's a lot of pretty girls out here. Ah, I knew that would work. All right, now, Wolfer, I need your help, so pay close attention. I need you to go down into your doghouse and... I don't think he's paying attention. Wolfer, uh-oh, I think he's in love. Are you in love? I was afraid of that. Do you see a pretty girl out there? I'm sorry. I'm oh, over there? Well, snap out of it. I need you to go down into your doghouse, get your best Crayola, and make me a cue card. Because the special word for today is happy. So I want you to write happy across the cue card. How do you spell happy, everybody? H-A-P-P-Y. Very good. Let's see the cue card. Wait a minute, Wilford. That's not the cue card. That's your rubber ducky. It's not time for a bath. I'm sorry. How many of you even got a shower here this Woo! week? All right. Well, okay. This is the smelly side. That's the clean side. Just kidding. As puppeteers, you will learn how to smell each other's sweat. So just get used to it. Armpits are always in your face when you're back. Now, Wilford, go back into your doghouse. Get rid of the rubber ducky and get me the cue card. Now, here's the plan. Every time you see the cue card come up, and of course it's going to say happy, you're just going to yell with the cue card. It says nice and loud, and that's your part of the song. Let's see that. Wait a minute, Wilford, that's not the cue card. That is a bone. I didn't say go dig for a bone. I said go down into your doghouse and get me a cue card. Oh, everybody make him feel bad. Say, oh, poor Wolfer. All right, Wolfer, go down into your doghouse. Get me that cue card. Now, we're going to practice it. So every time you see the cue card and the cue card says, what? Happy. Happy. Very good. You're going to yell it out nice and loud. Let's see that cue card, Wolfer. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfer, he thinks he's a movie star. All right, let's make him feel important. Everybody go, ooh. Everybody go, ah. All right, well, for a movie star, now get me the cue card. This is the last time I'm going to ask. Get that Crayola, make it big enough so that everybody can read even way far in the back. Whoa, that is a huge Crayola. All right, let's see that cue card. I'm keeping her busy back there. Very good, all right, let's practice it. Put the cue card down. What are you going to do when you see the cue card? Very good, all right. Boys, can you do that too while you're back here? We like to punish the people backstage. <laughs> all right, let's all sway back and forth. Very good. I'll start us out, and then you can join in. All right, my turn.
choice and I choose to be happy. Mirrors, it's all done with mirrors, 
or we videotape ourselves. The first time we did a live two-hour TV program, I was appalled as I, saw my, as I saw my own puppeteering when they played it back because I was just so hyped up that every character I had seemed to be in fast motion and I, oh, I learned a big lesson from that one. So it's important to watch what you do with puppets. All right, if you've never had a puppet on your hand, put your hand inside of the puppet. For a wide mouth puppet, if you're right-handed, use your right hand. If you're left-handed, start with your left hand. Start with your stronger hand. Um, it's important to remember that as you learn puppetry, you're going to find out that you use not just your strong hand, your right hand, your left hand. You're going to use both hands, your feet, your elbow, your head. Everything's going to become uh, something that needs to either hold a prop or do a puppet. So put your hand inside the puppet. Your thumb is going to be down on the lower part. You will feel a piece of foam that's underneath your thumb. If you can see your thumb like this, like an Adam's apple, you're in the wrong spot. You'll feel cardboard kind of covered with fabric. There might be a piece of elastic in there that holds your thumb in. That's where your thumb needs to be on the bottom. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah, that's not cool there. So go ahead and put it up through. Okay, then your top four fingers, there should be a piece of foam pushing down on your fingers. Do you feel that? If you feel big open space, you're up in their brains. They don't like that too much. Okay, because there's nothing up there. All right, important thing to remember, once your hand's in there, you don't need to pinch your hand really tight because you'll wear yourself out and lock your hand up. But you do want to keep the mouth closed. You don't want to gape an open mouth like this when you're not speaking. It looks like your puppet's about to throw up at any moment. So uh, you'll hear me say, mouth's closed, eyes forward. Okay, Sarah, so if you want to do it back behind there. So the first thing to remember is eyes forward. Look for where your audience is. If we're position down here on the floor and our audience is sitting on the floor, I don't want to be looking over their heads. I want my eyes to be down to the kids, okay, to include them in. So don't just stare off into space. Especially one of the things people do when they first put a puppet on is they're looking up in the air. So what I want to tell you, and if you've ever seen like the Henson puppeteers practice, they either use monitors or they're constantly looking at your puppet. So don't look away from your puppet. Once you look away from them, they do all kinds of bad things. So if your director is talking to you, or, or you're the director, you can still talk to other people that keep your eyes on your puppet, okay? So eyes forward, mouths closed. To make an entrance, if you're doing using a stage, you want to make a good entrance because we are the puppet's legs. So we're going to count to three, and that first one, two, three is your one, two, three to get ready. What that means is make sure that your puppet's hair is smooth down, not sticking up, bows are tied, make sure noses are on, not falling off, make sure that their rods are positioned in front of them carefully, not tucked behind their head and caught, because once you get up there, there's nothing you can do about it unless you show your hand. So that one, two, three is to get ready. The second one, two, three is to make an entrance. We're going to take three steps up and forward a little bit. So we'll look at this one, two, three, and up, two, three. Take three nice big steps, and you want to move forward just a little bit. Now, you want to lock your arm in place. A lot of people think that, well, if I just relax my arm, I'm going to last longer. Actually, you're using more muscles. See, I'm not using a muscle just to hold my arm up like this, but as soon as I do this, there's the muscle, okay? So you want to lock that arm in place. And when I first started puppetry, what helped me, and that's why most of your puppets don't have rods, because when you're first learning puppetry, don't bother with the rod yet. The most important thing is your height, your positioning, and moving the mouth correctly. So don't even worry about the rods yet. I usually just pin the hands to the chest of the person, uh, the puppet, so that they can't fool with them. All right, now that you're up all the way and your hand is locked into place to make an exit, you can either turn completely around or, as we do, like swinging a golf club. You want to swing in front of you, not away from you. But cross in front, you're going to walk down, two, three. So you're crossing in front. Now, if you're left-handed, it's going to go the opposite direction. So it would look like this. I'm right-handed, so I'm going down, two, three. Okay, that's walking off to the side. If you're going off into the sunset, I turn completely around, and I walk down, two, three. And look how I'm covering some ground. You don't want to do the ladder, where you walk straight up the ladder. You also don't want to just pop up out of nowhere. And especially if you're in a rush, you don't want to drop out through the trap door either. Okay? A lot of times you think, well, what's next? What's next? I've got to finish the song. The last word of the song in the air, they're gone. Take the time to walk off. Even if, you're, if you have a pre-recorded skit and you're not ready in your puppet and you already hear the person talking, 
it's a lot better to come up talking than to just go, okay, Sammy's talking, oh, I gotta talk, and yeah. appear on it. Come up talking. As far as the audience is concerned, they're hearing that voice off stage, and you're coming, and if you just take your time and come up, it looks a lot more natural than just popping out of nowhere. Now, for some of the characters that you do have, you have to think of the character, too. A butterfly would not walk up, okay? A butterfly would fly up. A flower would take three steps up, but a flower would grow or pop up out of nowhere. This is the one time you're allowed to pop up the tree, the tree and plop down. The tree would grow because he's an old tree. He would come up. Think of the character. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, the puppet, yes, if it's a, a rabbit, you might want to come up like this. Instead of walking up like this, you might want to come up. Okay, same with the frog. So think of the character that you're using. The sun, okay, sun would be something different. The sun rises, so you might want to come up like this with the sun. Okay, and then exit with the sun. A sun wouldn't turn around, you see the back and walk off into the distance. That would be pretty strange. So you want to come back down. So think of the character that you're using. All right, let's make a good entrance and then an exit. This is your one, two, three to get ready. One, two, three, and up, two, three. Very good. Check your height. Make sure your eyes are down. Okay, don't take your eyes off your puppet. Very good. Mouths are closed. All right, now we're going to walk to the side. So turn into yourself and down, two, three. Very good. Okay, what goes on inside of your puppet? This is what goes on inside with the mouth. Pretend that there's a, so take your puppet off your hand. Pretend there's like a thousand pound weight on your hand. You can't move these top fingers. Just try moving your thumb. It's going to feel a little weird. It's going to feel like your thumb is an alien. The first time I moved just my thumb. See this muscle here? We always wonder, what is that muscle for? What's it used for other than pushing doors open? I think God created that for puppeteers. So move your mouth puppeteers. So just try moving your thumb. And picture that this is the puppet's mouth and that you're spitting the words out to the audience. So if there's a word in there, I'm going to say, hello has two syllables. So it's going to look like this. Hello. Let's just try hello. Ready? One, two, three. Hello. hello. So it's open, close. It wouldn't just be one syllable. Hello. Okay? So it's hello. Take your time and spit that word out. It always helps me backstage. The first time we did a show without the curtains on for the um, puppeteers that were learning, they said, we noticed that you say all the words along with the puppets. Oh, I never thought of that. Do you guys think that? <laughs> we sing. Yeah. It's, just, it's almost like there's this invisible fishing line from your jaw down your arm into the, into the puppet, and it helps you. When my mouth is open, the puppet's mouth should be open. Okay, so I'm pushing those words out to the audience. Now, when you're inside the puppet, you're, oh my goodness, how do I keep this hand still? It doesn't necessarily, you know, uh, stop moving up a little bit, but when I'm moving my hand forward, it helps me not to do this. So it is going to move a little bit. You can't keep it perfectly still. Um, what helps me too is when I'm inside the puppet like that and I'm, I'm talking, I'm picturing spitting the words out, but this is what I see a lot of time when someone puts a puppet on for the first time. They do what we call biting words. You know what biting words are? Instead of hello, it's like this. Hello! It's like they see... That's my phone. <laughs> I forgot it was on. Okay, so you want to spit the words out to the audience. If those words are floating by, you don't want to bite them off. Hello, my name is... And that's the biggest mistake I see puppeteers do. They get real nervous and they do the complete opposite. They put the puppet on, and even if the puppet's not talking, as soon as that puppet goes on, for some reason their hands keep going inside, this is all you see. Don't want to see that at all. Take your time, spit the words out to the audience. All right, this time we're just going to say, with our puppets on, hello, my name is, and whatever your name is. Who has a long name with many syllables? Allison. What is it? Allison. Allison. When you said Allison, I'm like, is your name Allison? <laughs> <laughs> okay, his name is Allison. Very good. Three syllables. So it wouldn't just be Allison, it would be Allison. Now you'll notice that I kind of opened my mouth a little bit wider where the um, emphasis was. So it was Allison. 
That gave my puppet more character, rather than just this very stationary, Allison. That's another mistake I see. A lot of people are so afraid to open their mouth. They're not animated enough. You can either have the non-animated people that are just stuck there like this, or the overly animated. Keep that in mind. Your puppet shouldn't be like it's having an epileptic seizure every time it's up there. I see this a lot. Hi, kids. How are you today? Okay. Bye. See ya. What was that? Okay. All right. So let's try. Hello, my name. Yes. Sorry. I make them. I can break them. Okay. Here we go. Ready? On the count of three, we're going to go up and say hello. My name is one, two, three, and up, two, three. Very good. Let's say hello. My name is. Hello. My name is. Hey, don't be shy. Let's try it a little bit, a little bit more animated. On the count of three, one, two, three. Hello. Very good. My name is whatever. Very good. Everybody looked wonderful. Take a bow. And then exit down. Two, three. Okay, shake your arm out. Now, you're going to feel this tomorrow, but I'm not going to be around, so you can't hurt me. But it's great exercise. I can go into doing a program at 9 a.m., feeling really tired, and by the end of it, I feel like I've had an aerobic session. So it really is, it, it's a great way to minister to yourself, too, doing puppets. We're going to try something a little bit harder. We're going to try supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And you've got to get all of those symbols, syllables. So we're going to start really slow. Ready? One, two, three. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Now, you know when you look in the dictionary and you see that little emphasis thing? Did you see how I went? Docious. Let's try that again. One, two, three. Super cow, fragilistic, expialidocious. Have you done puppets before? No. Oh, you're a natural. I, ha I have to say, you're a natural. Another thing, too, if you're thinking of starting a puppet ministry and you're, you're going to be the one that's going to be the director, I highly recommend directors need to be back there with the performers. I did a huge conference one time just for directors, and I said, okay, directors, we're going to come back and do the show. And they all looked at me. They said, oh, we don't do the puppets. What? If you're going to be a director, you've got to get down there. If you can't even get on your knees, at least be standing in the back. Do the puppets. Learn the technique, because you'll never know how to direct your team if you're not a puppeteer as well. So let's try a little bit faster. One, two, three. Super Cala Fragilistic. Expialidocious. 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 Take your hand out. Take a good look. Are your veins popping up on your hands? Yeah. When you first first start doing skits, you'll find that maybe your, your thumb will completely lock up and refuse to move because you're training your arm. First of all, you're training the blood to rush up, go uphill. I couldn't hold my hand up for that long. No way when I first started doing puppets. My, my finger would lock, lock up. We started doing shows right away. We were doing a barbershop quartet. My finger went completely numb. It wouldn't move. Now, I thought to myself, what do I do? If I just drop out of the team... It's going to look kind of funny with three barbershops up there. So I said, what can I do? So what I did is I let my thumb recover while I was up there, and I just moved my head back and forth so it looked like he was singing until it recovered enough to catch up on the song. That's just in case of emergencies. Another thing is if you're a puppeteer and you're giving a long monologue and you're talking to the kids and you find that your thumb is getting really tired and you say, I just don't have the strength to finish this, Exit down talking and switch hands. Mm -hmm. Come up at another spot, like on the second tier. Come up with your puppet, come up talking. And that way it looks like he just went to another place on the stage. Okay? That's much better than just dropping out of sight, which I see a lot of. One time my sister, we were doing a show at a camp and a giant hornet landed on her. So mm -hmm. we were doing monks and they were standing very noble there. And all of a sudden this hornet landed. She's like, ah! 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 <laughs> oh, I said, Move it on, the show must go on. You know, I took my other hand and went, bing, and flicked it off. Anyway. So keep in mind that 
the audience is going to see whatever you do. All right, I'm going to put a little song in here. You might know it. Uh, I can find it here. Put on a happy face. Songs are a great way to learn how to do puppets. And that's the first thing we did before we did speaking skits was songs. You can turn the radio on, listen to the radio, put some gospel music on, sing with the puppets. I used to stop at stoplights in my van, and as music was playing on the radio, I would be doing this, and people would look at me like I was strange. Yes, do it on the way home. And it's a good way to practice. You don't even have to know the words in order to, uh, you're mainly listening to the syllables is what you're listening to. I can't tell you the words to most of the songs that we do, but I can certainly tell when the syllables come in. And then we're going to have you come back here and perform it. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's go find them. Okay, everybody. Eyes forward. Mouths closed. We're going to make a little entrance. One, two, three, and up, two, three. Notice how I kind of moved his head back and forth a little bit? That's just to give him a little bit of character, like they're strolling along, rather than a stiff entrance. Okay, move your head back and forth. Here's the song. Put on a happy face. Touch up the clouds and cheer up. Put on a happy face. Take up the gloomy mask of tragedy. It's not just my decided to smile, we're going to make a counterclockwise circle. So it'll be like, decided to smile, we're going to go right below the stage and come up. So disappear, smile, and come back up. When we're working behind a stage like this, um, with a group of people and you're doing a song, it's really important, you're like dancers, to choreograph it. So we always have like a line leader, and that's usually the person on the end here. So you follow them. When they do their smile, you're all going down at the same time and coming up. So this person on either this end or that end has a big responsibility, depending on what the song is. Okay, they're the line leader. So when I will say, right, right, left, left, the line leader, you want to go to the right. So it would be like this. We're going to bounce twice. Right, right, left, left, right, right, stop. Then when it says, stick out that noble chin, stick out the chin and pull it back. When you're back behind the stage, these bars here, these are just reference bars. They're not leaning posts as much as we would like them to be. Because most stages are so, ours is pretty strong, but most stages are so lightweight. If you lean on, they go right over. Yes, PVC pipe ones, the tripod, the you know, extension ones. Um, so this is just a reference point. Your puppet should be belly button high to where this curtain is. But you want to be back about, whoops, I gotta fast forward because it's more than that on there. Um, you want to, was that fast forward or one? Oh, went to the end. Um, you want to be belly button high about six inches away. Don't crowd up to the bar there because if you do that, you can't move. You just crowd it up there. Okay, let's see. 
Yes, I used to have an old PVC pipe stage that fell out quite often. Do it on a little further. Yeah, that's a good thing. Inexpensive stage. You don't have to practice. <laughs> Okay, so how it goes is stick out your noble chin, then we're going to do the right, right, left, left. Then when I say if you're in the front row, I mean if you're in the back row, when I say uh, turn in a circle, the back row is going to actually kind of march in a circle and come back. The people in the front row, you can't do that obviously, it's a little bit harder on your knees. So you're just going to bounce back and forth, okay? All right, let's do it out here and then we're going to do behind the stage. So go ahead and hit it. We're going to do the dance. So you have to sing, dance, and do all of your puppet techniques at the same time. Eyes forward, mouths closed. One, two, three. Move your head back and forth. And sing. Put on a happy face. Flash off the clouds and cheer up. Put on a happy face. Take off the gloomy mask of tragedy. It's not your style. Get ready for that song. Okay, get up. Now put that arm straight over your head. Okay, you come forward a little bit. 
with your body. There you go. Now do some height. Put your arms straight over your head. You come forward a little bit. There we go. Arms. See, I've seen these saggy arms because none of you are shorter than me. So you should be able to see. When you stretch your arm like that, be careful not to stretch your head as well. Remember, your hand has got a thousand pound weight on it. Okay? Stretch up as high as you can. You're, you're working really hard here. That's about as high as you can. Look down to your audience. Okay, we have what? Three in the back? Anybody else want to go in the back? One more big guy coming back. Is it Sergeant Scott? Yeah. You. You. Yeah, let's see. She's doing pretty good, but let's see if we can see your pipe. I don't want you to stop. Let's see how you feel up there. That's what I stand for. Can you see your head? Yeah. Uh, well, you were stretching really good, so we'll show you where you stand. Okay, so you got your back on the end. Switch over to your head. Okay, everybody down, turn into yourself. So what I want you to do, if you put anybody left-handed here? In this room? Okay, unfortunately left-handed, when you're working with the team, you are forced to move your hand when it normally doesn't move because you want to go down with the team. So um, you're going to go to uh, the left side. So turn your heads towards those outer windows there. Okay, this way. Very good. Turn this way and walk down, two, three. Everybody go down. Down. Very good. But of course you're going to be, on this song at the very end, you're just going to fall backwards. So everybody, one, two, three, and up, two, three. Okay, I think you're ready. Do you remember the choreography? Oh, not at all. Everybody down. I'll yell out the choreography of you, so don't answer. Yes. Okay? Okay, one, two, three, and up, two, three. And sing. Look down to your eyes. And if we have time, I'll show you a lot of props. Props and puppetry is a big thing, too. And they can become the most awesome 
profiteers. We had a little girl that just struggled, 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 could not, in my inner city group, could not just get the puppetry at all. She thought, I'm done, I'm out, I can't do this. We put her as the profiteer, and we did a show, we had over 75 props. That little girl, she had everything organized, lined up, props came in, props went out, she was awesome. So, you know, don't, as soon as you get some, I've had handicapped kids that have had special needs that worked with me, thinking, oh gosh, this is gonna, you know, never work. They've done a beautiful job. Um, I had to do a whole performance one time. I had a performance class. Guess how many people showed up for my class? Me, an older gentleman, and a mentally challenged boy. And he's like, Miss Jo, we can do it. We can do it. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a disaster. I called the director. I said, I don't know if you're going to have a performance tonight. I'll tell you, God really ministered mm -hmm. to me there because the team of us three did the same show and on a two-hour practice that my team normally does, and they didn't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. And the boy that had the special needs, I could hardly move his leg to, he did a beautiful job. I mean, he was reminding me what was coming up next. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've learned my lesson that don't be limited by. Okay, uh, that's, wait a minute, let me see. Look at this thing. Yeah, yeah, you go on the side. Sorry! Okay, this is a non-verbal puppetry skit. Very easy to do. you or Jesus died for you because he loves you. Very simple skit. So one thing I love about that is it comes with, you can get the video that shows you the skit uh, as they did it and then the skit without the curtains. It also has in the book, shows you how to make the props. You can put it on an overhead, 
project it, make some of the signs and things, it's so easy. It's like a you know, no brainer there. Great resource. I like to get resources that I can use, like, can my money's worth out because I'm cheap. I'm a woman. <laughs> so I've used that the most. Okay, another good source, because we have a few more minutes left. Another good source is children's story tape. So if you're looking for pre-recorded skits, One Way Street has a good one. There's another one. It used to be called Puppet Productions. They were the pioneers of puppet skits. We're going to do a, uh, but they're now called Puppets, Inc. Uh, let's do the, um, real quick, the Bad Moon Chef here. And I'll show you how simple. Sometimes when we're doing a children's church program, my puppeteers are the season program. Uh, performers, they don't even hear the skit until they show up. <laughs> and sometimes they don't hear the skit at all. I will tell them, I'll say, you are going to be the girl and I'm going to be the guy. And we just do the skit without any practice. So this is kind of how puppet skits go, the traditional church puppet skits. <laughs> Our special guest today on Yesterday is Graham Cracker, the Babylon Baker. I'm glad to be here today on Yesterday. And what's the recipe today, Mr. Cracker? Breakfast rolls made with yeast and shoe polish for people who want to rise and shine. <laughs> Tell us, Graham, why do you continue to bake each week on TV? Don't you ever get tired of baking all the time? Well, frankly, I need the dough so I can loaf. Also, my wife likes the donuts. But I do occasionally get tired of the whole business. Uh, what ingredient have you brought today? A very common ingredient used in many recipes. And what does it do for the food? It adds flavor and zest. Without it, many foods are tasteless and yucky. Is it good for anything else? It also acts as a preservative. Until the invention of the icebox, it was considered an essential ingredient to life and was at times more valuable than gold. We're all in suspense. What is it? Mackle. Mackle. <coughs> N-A-C-L. Salt. Common salt? Yes, a very necessary ingredient. Jesus once said that Christians are the salt of the earth, given to add flavor to this world and to make it tolerable. It's hard to imagine what this world would be like without Christians. How do Christians flavor the world? But just as salt makes food taste better, a Christian makes the world a better place by showing God's love. Food without salt is tasteless. Life without Christ is dull. Well, we're all out of time for today on Yesterday. Join us again tomorrow. Remember, today yesterday was tomorrow. And today tomorrow will be yesterday. I said that right, didn't I? <coughs> Goodbye now. Tomorrow, Keep flavoring the world as Jesus taught in Matthew 5.13. You are the salt of the yeah, earth. Remember. Okay, so that's how just two puppeteers can do a simple skit, teach a memory verse, some very simple things too. Uh, any questions before we go? We didn't get to do the whole thing. We're gonna light up the rainbow. If you want to add props and things, let me just show you a quick thing about what a puppet prop is. Uh, the story of Noah. It said, uh, you know, he sent a storm. Okay, very easy puppet prop. Then at the very end, the rainbow would light up, and it said the sun came out and the rainbow. So these are different props that you can make. Very easy for a puppeteer. Uh, when it said Noah built the ark, every time I listen to a story, um, go ahead up with the animals, I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to have puppeteers that can do all the animals? Very simple little props with the animals came aboard the ark. Uh, it said it rained and rained and rained. <laughs> now, if you're a puppeteer, if you're seeing, if you're going to see the puppeteer's hands, we always make them wear white five-fingered gloves. That way they become a puppet themselves. We never let them show watch, rings, fingers, always white gloves. They become like they did, you know, with the song last night with the candle. That was very pretty. They became the puppets, actually, with their hands. Um, let's see. At the very end, and there's the fish in the sea. Uh, at the very end, sent a dove. Okay, so just a little, we say once you get into puppeteering, everything is on a stick. So, everything uh -huh. is on a stick. Uh -huh. My son, I have a five-year-old, and he just thinks everything has a stick on it. Any kind of, you know, thing around the house. Where's the stick? So, okay, any questions? I know this was like a speed course. Make sure you get a resource list. Do you want to just lay the puppets up here? Did it end on time? 
Very good. Give yourselves a hand. You guys did an awesome job. I'll be honest, I did not see any puppeteers, so I say, oh, you might want to be a puppeteer. I didn't see any of that today. Thank you guys. You learned a lot. Awesome. Yes, we did. I feel so bad. I felt like I'm just throwing 